In this Learn Electrics video, we will take a simplified look at what we can do to help us when we need to make a decision about equipotential bonding of conductive parts that are not part of the electrical installation. An important consideration for any electrician. We've had a few questions recently on how to decide if external oil storage tanks need to be bonded, or copper water pipes that enter the house by plastic service pipes. Copper or metallic installation pipes should ideally be visually inspected throughout their route to ensure that at no point do they make contact with earth or earthy parts. But total visual inspection is not always possible. Pipes disappear into walls or under floors, for instance. Which means that a measurement of the actual resistance between the conductive part and the main earth terminal is the only way to be certain if that conductive part or metal pipe should be bonded or not. But what values of resistance should we be looking for? The question then is, should I bond the oil tank? Does it need equipotential bonding? How do I make a decision? The formula shown here appears in Guidance Note 8, the IEC book on earthing and bonding. Using this formula, a designer of a circuit can decide what level of shock current he is prepared to expose the user to and can then calculate the minimum resistance between the conductive part and the main earth terminal to meet this requirement. It's not a difficult formula to use, as we shall see. If we break this formula down, we realise that this is just Ohm's law using different letters. RCP is the minimum resistance between the conductive part and the main earth terminal in ohms. U0 is the nominal line voltage with respect to earth for the installation in volts. And IB is the value of the shock current that is passing through a human body or livestock that should not be exceeded in amps. And the designer will decide what this maximum figure is. Finally, ZT is the total impedance or resistance of the human body or livestock in ohms. This information can be found in tables that list various situations, but in general we take the figure to be 1000 ohms measured between a hand and the feet in damp conditions. This slide shows the effects of electric current on the human body when the line voltage is 230 volts AC. At less than 0.5 milliamps the user will barely feel an electric shock. As the current increases, there comes a point where it is difficult to let go of a conductive part or cable. At 30 milliamps, we are approaching the limit of what is a recoverable electric shock. Involuntary muscle contractions will be noticed and an inability to let go. It is recommended that an RCD is installed to disconnect the supply in 300 milliseconds or less and this will help to make the shock recoverable. A longer exposure to shock will make breathing difficult and may cause a disturbed heart function and more serious problems. So how do we make decisions about bonding or not? We should measure the resistance between the main earth terminal and the conductive part being tested with a multimeter that has sufficient ranges that it can display the resistance values accurately. Many multifunction testers will reach their maximum display value at just a few thousand ohms or even less and accurate readings may not be possible. A reading such as OL shows that the reading is over limits for the meter and that is not going to help us to make a decision. Shown here is a copper water pipe inside the house that is supplied by a plastic service pipe. Ideally we should visually inspect the whole length of the pipe but what happens when it disappears from view inside a wall? We must measure the resistance value. Out in the garden, at the oil storage tank, we may find that we need to bond the oil feed pipe. But should we bond the actual oil storage tank? If there is an insulating tap or joint between the feed pipe and the tank, we may not need to bond. An unbonded storage tank with a high resistance to the main earth terminal should not introduce an electrical shock hazard during an earth fault on the installation. An oil tank that does not need to be bonded but has been bonded can introduce a shock hazard where one did not exist before because 
we have now introduced a low resistance path for shock currents to flow from the house all the way to the oil tank during a fault. So what is the minimum resistance needed between conductive parts and the installation's main earth terminal to keep people safe? For this, we can use the standard formula as shown in guidance note 8. When would we want to calculate RCP? Let's look. A designer might decide that any fault current below 1 milliamp is an acceptable risk. If less than 1 milliamp of current might flow, it will not bond the conductive parts. However, if more than 1 milliamp flows, he or she has decided that they will need to bond, as these will now be extraneous conductive parts. If the designer knows the maximum current that they do not want to exceed, the formula will tell them the minimum resistance that must exist. Let's calculate this example. Here's the formula, and to the right is the information that we know. Again, this is Ohm's law. We have a voltage, a current, and a resistance. So let's answer the question. For not more than 1 milliamp to flow, the resistance value between the main earth terminal and the conductive part should be greater than what? Pause the video and follow the calculation through, breaking it down into nice easy steps. Done correctly, the answer should be 229,000 ohms. And calculating the answer is as easy as that. If RCP is equal to or greater than 229,000 ohms, then 1 milliamp or less will flow through the conductive part during a fault. And if the resistance increases, the current will decrease further. Of greater usefulness, in my opinion, is finding out how much current might flow through the body during a fault, and then making a bonding decision based on the current value, or IB. There's no formula for this in the book, so how are we going to calculate it? We want to know IB, how much electric shock current will flow through the human body, or livestock, if we have measured RCP. To do this, we just rearrange the original formula. Let's look. Follow these steps and pause the video if you need to. Start with the standard formula and make an equals sign. Now move minus ZT to the other side and change the minus to a plus. We can move U0 to the bottom of the other side and leave behind a 1 as a place marker. Now turn everything upside down to arrive at the finished formula as shown at the bottom. This formula is telling us to do what? It is telling us that if we take the nominal voltage and divide this by the resistance from the conductive part of the MET and the resistance of the body added together, the result will be the value of current passing through the body. Ohm's law again. Voltage divided by resistance equals current. Let's set ourselves a question. You're on site and you need to decide if the oil tank needs bonding. You need to know what current will flow through a person's body if the resistance between the main earth terminal and the tank is measured at 514 kilo ohms, and the body impedance is assumed to be 1000 ohms. Using our formula for IB and the information given in the blue box, we can make the calculation as shown. Remember, this is nothing more complicated than Ohm's law. 230 volts divided by 515,000 ohms gives us 0.0004466 amps, an incredibly small amount of current. We can change this long number with all these decimal places into something easier to read by multiplying by 1000 and converting the number to milliamps. And we can tidy this up even further by rounding up the answer to two significant decimal places. Our answer now is 0 0.45 milliamps. The answer informs us that we may leave the oil tank unbonded. At less than half a milliamp, the customer is safe. Half a milliamp of current is not going to harm the customer, and they probably won't even feel anything anyway. A quick recap on the two formulas that we used. RCP can be found by dividing the nominal voltage by the desired maximum fault current through the body, and then subtracting the impedance of the body which is often taken as 1000 ohms. We rearrange this formula to arrive at a second one that would give us the current flowing through a human body 
if we already know the resistance to the conductive part. This was achieved by dividing the voltage by the sum of the measured resistance and the impedance of the body. Now we can calculate either the minimum resistance, RCP, or we can calculate the maximum current, IB. This table gives a reminder of these resistances and currents and their effect on the human body or livestock. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.